In this lecture, we'll take a look at how we can define a pydantic or schema model to define the exact shape of a response. Because right now, if you actually see uh, any of our uh, path operations, what we do is we just return a post or multiple posts or an updated post. Uh, and whatever data we get back from the post, we just send it back to the user. And there may be times where maybe you don't want all of the properties or all of the attributes and columns from our post table to get sent back to the user because um, you know, potentially that could be sending him back information he shouldn't know about, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, like your, your user account, right? When a user logs in, we don't want to send him back his password. He already knows his password. We don't want to continuously transmit uh, information like that. So there can be times where you do want to remove certain fields or properties. And before we actually get to performing that, we're going to do a little bit of cleanup because if we go to really any one of our requests, like if I go to get posts and hit send, uh, you see that we have, you know, within data, we then have the list or array of all of our posts. And then if we look at create posts, right, you can see we always have data and then the actual post. I'm going to get rid of the data field just because I think it's unnecessary and it kind of clutters things. So what we'll do is uh, within all of our path operations, we're going to just remove data. And instead of returning, you know, a dictionary, we're just going to return posts. And so it, so fast API will automatically be able to serialize that and convert that into JSON. And I'm going to do that for all of these. We're just going to remove that data keyword for all of them. We don't need to do it for delete, but we do need to do it for update. And so now if we actually take a look at what this is going to look like, if I hit send, you can see we just get back the post and we don't get that data keyword. Same thing for get post. What does that look like? Perfect. So we don't have the, the data keyword. Now let's actually define what the response should look like. And we do that with our schemas. We do that with our pydantic models. Just like we have a pydantic model for creating posts, which happens to just inherit from post base. So post create is just saying that we expect a title, we expect a content published as optional. And if you don't provide one, it's true. And so we already know how to work with that. Let's create a brand new class for the response. So, you know, this handles the direction of the user sending data to us. And now we want to handle us sending data to the user. So I can create a brand new class. We can call this post response uh, or we, because it represents the response or we could just call it post. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to call it just post. And then we're going to extend base model because all of our pydantic models have to extend base model. Uh, and then from here, what we have to do is we have to specify all of the fields that we want uh, in the response. So we want to send back the title because that makes sense. So we'll send back the title. We'll send back the content, which is going to be of a type string. And then um, we'll send back published as well, which is going to be a Boolean. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so this still looks exactly the same as uh, the other ones. But if you actually see right now, for any of the one requests that we sent, we get back the ID as well as the created at field. But since we didn't include those two fields, we shouldn't actually send it back to the user. So let's actually try this out. And so I'm going to save this. And then to actually define the response model, under a specific request, we'll start off with, um, uh, we'll start off with the create request or create posts. And then within the decorator, we just pass in another field, and this is called response model. And then you can just let VS Code automatically select it. And then here we just reference schemas dot, and then the name of the class. So let's try this out and let's see what happens. So now if I create a post, okay, we get a 500 error, and let's see what happened. Uh, it says value is not a valid dict. So it's it looks like Pydantic is saying that, you know, when we try to send the response, uh, the, the data we got back was not a valid dictionary, right? And because Pydantic, the Pydantic class works with dictionary, it takes a dictionary and then converts it to that specific model. So what exactly happened here? Why is this causing an error? Well, if you look at the documentation, and where is it? Right here. And if you go under um, SQL Relational Database, it says that for your models, your Pydantic models, we have to add this extra config called class config or a mode true. And it explains exactly why we need that, right? Because by default, the Pydantic model will only read it if it's a dictionary, right? And that's what it's expecting in our code because we see the error. It's not a valid dictionary. And that's because when we actually make this query, right, new post, this is actually 
not a dictionary, it's a SQL alchemy model. And so Pydantic has no idea what to do with the SQL alchemy model. It only knows how to work with dictionaries. So we have to tell it to actually convert this SQL alchemy model to be a Pydantic model. And we do that by passing in this specific text right here. So this is going to say ORM mode true. This is an ORM model, and it's going to tell Pydantic say, to you know ignore the fact that it's not a dictionary and go ahead and convert it. So we can just copy this text and add this to our code for our post model. And that should be properly indented. So now that should be good. And let's see if we still get an error now. So let's say it send. Look at that, we got it. It seems like everything worked okay, 201 created. But take a look at the fields that we got back. We just got title, content, published. And that's because our model explicitly specified title, content, published. Now we know if we go to our Postgres database, we do have an ID field and a created at field. So if we wanted to add those, we can say um, ID, which is gonna be of a type int. Let's save that and let's see what that looks like. Right now we get the ID back, perfect. Well, do we want the created at time? I think, you know, your front end code probably wants that as well. So let's go ahead and add that. So here we'll do created at. Now, what should the type for created at be, right? It is ultimately, you know, a date and time. Well, we can, we could do, you know, something like a string, but uh, what we can do that's better than that is we can import from date time, import date time. And so now we can say that the time, the created at is gonna be of type date time. And so this is an extra little bit of validation to make sure that what we send back is a actual valid date time. Just make sure that you import it on, in this file. And so now if I send this back, we now get created at as well, right? So this is how we ultimately define the data that we send back. We can specify exactly the fields we want and that way we can ensure we don't unnecessarily send data that shouldn't be getting sent. Right? And we can do this with anything. I can just send back the ID if I really wanted to. Now we just get the ID, right? You see there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of power uh, when it comes to defining uh, your responses, just like we had when it comes to defining our requests. And with APIs, like I always say, make sure you explicitly define the exact data you want to receive and the exact data you want to send back to the client. Now, before we move any further and wrap up this video, uh, you'll see that there's a lot of duplication, right? Because this post model for the response, right? It needs title content published, and then we're just adding ID and created at, right? And like I said, when it comes to a real application, you're gonna have so many more fields, so many more columns. It would be such a pain to have to repeat both of them. And so that's why I ultimately created this post base class because I can extend the post base class and what that's going to do is, is that's going to cause me to inherit the title, content, and published fields because they're already defined in here. And so I can just remove that. Right? And so then I can just specify ID and create it at, and then it's going to inherit the other three from the previous class. And so now if I try this again, I send it. You can see that I get the same exact result, but I only had to specify the new columns I wanted to add in the response. So this is really no different than, you know, working with any other model in Python. We get access to all of the uh, usual features like inheritance, so we can help reduce the amount of code that we actually write. All right, and so now let's go ahead and uh, update all of the other uh, path operations as well, because we can see that we only did it for create post, but let's go ahead and do it for get an individual post. So this is gonna be the same exact response model. And we can just reference schemas.post. And we'll do the same thing for our update post as well. We'll say response model equals schemas.post. And then let's just, you know, double check. So get one post, this should, Work just fine, perfect. Uh, and then update post. And it looks like that works as well. And the last thing that we need to do is get all posts, right? So right now, if we do get all posts, uh, where is that, right here? Right, we still haven't sent that, so let's do response model equals, and then we can say schemas.post. 
and then let's try that out. We hit send, we get an error, and this is expected. And I want you to stop and, whoops, I want you to stop and think about what exactly is happening. Because we are returning a list of posts. And it's trying to shape that into one individual post, right? We got a list of posts. We should be sending back a list of our schema post. So how do we do that? Can we just put a, can we just put a bracket or something like that? Will that work? Let's try this. Well, it looks like there's an error. So this doesn't seem to work. So how can we specify we want a list of posts? Well, we have to import something from the typing library. So we have an optional from the typing library. We can also import list. And so now if I go back to our get posts, I can say list. And so now if I hit send, we should get back all of our posts. So here we're just specifying we want a list of our specific schema post model. And that's just going to allow us to get a list of posts. Very simple.